What is a mandatory step? And what, what the system that we have here at the DRI, I think it's very interesting and, uh, and, uh, and important. We have under the same roof uh, all the levels of research, from, from bench to small animal models, uh, large animal models, and clinical, uh, uh, actually, care and, uh, and uh, research. So wh whenever we have something that uh, we feel comfortable bringing from the bench and the small animals to the large animals, there, there we have the, 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 the information, it is uh, working or not. And if it is not working as good as it works in the mouse, we have the luxury, let's say, of uh, getting around the table, scratching our heads and trying to go back, even if, if it is needed, we can go back to the mouse model, refine and come back to the preclinical model until we have something that is uh, safe, effective and uh, worthwhile moving toward the, a clinical application. So this is really uh, all the steps of, uh, of, uh, of research under the same roof, which is very unique because it really we have uh, uh, enlarged meetings where uh, people from the different uh, uh, disciplines and uh, expertise is around the same table. And what is beautiful is that you have this interaction with amongst uh, uh, people like we have pharmacologists, transplant surgeons, endocrinologists, uh, uh, say pharmacologists, bioengineers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you, you have really uh, people with a completely different background and they are all working together toward the, uh, our ultimate goal, to find a, a cure for type 1 diabetes. And uh, if we don't get to the cure in a month because it's more difficult than, than uh, getting a treatment in, in between, then we are going through that exercise because that is a step forward that uh, will uh, open. I mean, I'm sorry because sometimes I repeat the concepts in different words, but uh, I try to, to get uh, my thoughts uh, through and I hope that uh -huh. you don't mind. Um, we want to reach the cure, but uh, to reach a cure, we need to learn a lot along the way. The threshold is uh, always higher because we are uh, moving. Uh, actually, there is an exponential uh, uh, acceleration of, uh, of the research in the recent years which is very comforting because uh, we, we are more excited that there is, uh, it's almost a reach, uh, a cure. But still, uh, we need to learn a lot uh, along the way. And, and that, that's, that's where research has to be done very thoroughly because you don't want to go into a clinical application when you are not safe enough, or you don't have enough data because that is to put your patients at risk and, and that is not uh, ethically okay. And that, that we, we don't marry that, that philosophy. Our philosophy is to really do the right steps to, to get uh, uh, validating data that is uh, feasible, that is safe, and that there is an effect that we can measure. If we can measure that effect, then we can tune up the system and get better and better. And this has been uh, really the story of, uh, of, our, uh, of our team at, at all levels. But uh, don't let me talk, just uh, ask me a question. Maybe it's better because we can have a better uh, interaction. I can... Yeah, well, um, what are you working on right now? We, uh, my team is, uh, is working on um, several projects. Uh, the main line of research is uh, always uh, beta cell replacement. And uh, there are uh, two, if we really want to simplify to, to, to the bone, which are the, the critical limitation of beta cell replacement as uh, of today, there are two major limitations. Beta cell mass, meaning uh, how many functional beta cells we have available, and Im Im immunity. Uh, type 1 diabetes is a result of uh, an autoimmune process, so we need to deal with that. Now, if the beta cell mass, which is the other, the, the two things that we have to balance, the, if uh, beta cell mass is, uh, um, can be replaced by transplanting the cells, then we are adding complexity to the immunity component, because we have autoimmunity and we will have also rejection. Now, if you are bringing in also tissues that come from uh, animals, so xenotransplantation, then the rejection component is even uh, more complex. So we have, a, uh, we have to deal with, with those two components. So if you're thinking at inter uh, uh, on interventions um, early enough at the time of uh, diabetes onset, for example, well, if we are quick enough uh, in, uh, in restoring self-tolerance with uh, a, a powerful but safe uh, immune intervention, we might be better off because we can preserve the beta cells that are still in the pancreas and prevent them from being destroyed by the uh, progressive uh, uh, autoimmunity that is going on. This is a really a very uh, appealing approach, but there is already uh, a very large number of patients who have been 
who have already uh, uh, much uh, farther than that level and they have lost their beta cell mass. So for those patients, we need to come up with uh, a beta cell replacement therapy that is uh, uh, coming probably from other sources. And, uh, and uh, right now we are uh, looking uh, at different uh, uh, ways. One is the cadaveric donor islets, which is what is available right now. And this is uh, what we are transplanting into the liver in, in our patients uh, uh, at the present time. But the liver might not be the, the only place. And actually, we are looking at alternative sites for uh, islet transplantation. I don't know if you've already met other uh, colleagues here at the DRI, but we are working very, and we are pursuing very aggressively the possibility of developing a, a bio-hybrid device, a bio-artificial pancreas, endocrine pancreas, which is not the the pump with the uh, glucose sensor that uh, is integrated, but is uh, actually replacing endocrine producing cells into a device where we are manipulating the environment so that we can make it uh, very suitable for the islets to engraft, meaning that they can house there, they can uh, enjoy the, their stay, and they can uh, produce uh, insulin in, uh, in a physiological amount and respond uh, uh, to the needs of the body in a uh, long term that's the ultimate goal so what we are doing in, in this biohybrid device and i i have taken a a, a sample for for you to see it and i have two because we have two and uh, this is uh, only one type of, uh, of the of the device and uh, uh maybe um we will we will change the 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 type of uh, uh, uh shape